Hey guys, it's David from mdbootstrap.com. Welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to build an admin dashboard. You're going to deal with admin dashboards every time you are building some project which uh, either manage some users and some content or perhaps some sales and you need a dashboard to either visualize your data like here or to edit them, right? So you can imagine that you are changing some uh, user uh, data or some order data or some adding some content to your website. This is the first tutorial. Um, we're going to have two more, so three in total um, during each tutorial. I'm going to show you a different aspect of um, admin dashboard. So we're going to have also uh, dashboards for orders uh, and for traffic. So if you don't want to miss that, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to turn on notification as next tutorials will be released very, very soon. And you're going to be notified once that happen. So without further ado, let's get started. In order to start, obviously, we have to download MDB. So you can do it in many ways. Um, you can just go to your account, navigate to mdbootstrap.com and then search for your orders and hit the download button over here. Or if you are MDB CLI user, you can just open a terminal and type MDB init. Then we have to choose a proper version. As you can see, there are plenty of them. Today, we're going to be using uh, MDB 5. So the newest version as for today. So I'm going to just choose MDB 5 standard version, hit enter, and that's done. Our project is initialized and we can see this project over here. Let me quickly uh, rename it to MDB 5 admin basic dashboard. OK, let's open this with um, code editor and let's run index HTML in a live server. So this is our starting point. And from this place, we're going to start building our page. So very first step we're going to make is we're going to get rid of this uh, initial content over here. So let's remove this one. Let's create header main and a footer. So uh, basic uh, construction for our page, semantic construction, so we know what we are doing. And let's get started with SiteNav. So we are coming back to MD Bootstrap page, navigate to Bootstrap 5 docs, which you can find here in the technology switcher. So just go to version 5 and let's search for SiteNav. As always, you have many different examples available. Uh, at your disposal. So uh, let's, uh, we're going to start with a basic example. So uh, you can check how it works here on a demo. Uh, you can play with it, see how does it behave. Once you decide to use it, just copy a basic example from the snippet. So I'm going to copy code and I'm going to paste it into our header. And let's see how it looks in our project. So we have SiteNav over here. So let's have a look at our SiteNav at the moment. Uh, currently, it has a width of 240 pixels. So uh, thanks to that, it's, uh, it, can, it can fit into a smaller um, devices. And we're going to learn how to hide it on uh, smaller devices if we want. So I'm going to uh, teach you how to do that uh, in a few seconds. Uh, if we check code, you can see that it has ID because we're going to use it uh, for some manipulation and it has some links over here. This structure um, can be adjusted easily and you have many options to do so. Uh, here are some examples. So you can have links, you can have some accordions over here. So you can add some logos and uh, some other content over there. So yeah, I'm going to show you all of that in a second. Now, as I mentioned, there are plenty of options over here, uh, different behaviors of SiteNav. So I strongly encourage you to play with it. Check our docs. You can see that you can play with colors, theming and so on, which will affect our SiteNav. We have also dark mode, which is very, very uh, famous recently. I personally love the slim, uh, so which can which can become 
normal side nav and then toggle to something smaller so you still have side nav but it doesn't take that much space and so on and so on so take some time and play with it you can even uh, adjust it to the right side if you want it's very easy just change the attribute uh, yeah so just play with it and let's continue with our side nav to make it uh, working differently behaving differently on the mobile device so let's move this to our main part let's add some container here to push our content let's add some content and add our toggler so we're gonna see uh, now our button here it's visible so now you can see how does it works so we can use this button or obviously we can um, assign this functionality to any other element on our page which will toggle which is going to toggle our uh, our side nav now another important thing uh, to know is that like almost all mdb components we can adjust a lot of properties using a data attribute so for example the default uh, basic example which we are using has this data hidden set to false if I'm gonna change it to true as you can see the default behavior of our side nav is gonna be hidden so when we refresh the page it's uh, invisible and if we're gonna set it to false then it's gonna be visible by default now let's take care of mobile devices so let's go to the dogs and let's go to mode transition and so this is the example when we want to change uh, we want to hide our uh, side nav on the certain screen size so i'm going to copy the javascript part of um, of this example and i'm going to paste it here and explain it what it exactly does right now so as you can see we have a bunch of javascript here we don't have to really understand everything which is going on here uh, the two things which are important for us is that we need to use an id of our side nav which was side nav one and this settings defines on which width size our side nav is gonna disappear so let's change it to 1400 pixels and let's see how it's gonna behave now so once I'm gonna shrink our screen, our side nav disappears. And obviously once it disappears, we can still toggle it using our toggler. Next case which we have to handle is that if we were using container fluid, we would see that our side nav is covering up our content, our lorem ipsum and this toggler. So in order to fix that, we're gonna use a bootstrap media queries. So uh, let's go to, let's close this one. Let's go to layout and breakpoints. We're gonna reuse this uh, media query over here. We're gonna add it to our styles by the way I'm, I'm adding styles directly into the file so we would have everything in a single project uh, so i hope it's going to be easier for you to read it and understand it so let's add some styles to our main let's add padding left and set it to 240 pixels because as we said uh it's um this is size of our side nav and now everything works perfect and now our content adjust also to the screen size of our device now it's high time to add navbar to our project so let's go to navbar docs and then again i encourage you to go through the docs and go through examples and see what we can do uh, with this component as there are plenty of possibilities we're gonna start with the basic example uh, we're gonna do more advanced examples in the next tutorials so let's start with the basic one let's copy it and let's paste it below our side nav over here 
let's add comments. Now let, we need to do some adjustments over here. So uh, first we're going to start with changing class uh, light to white to fit the other colors on the page. Now we're going to add the class fixed top. Uh, we talked about it in the previous uh, tutorial, so I'm not going to uh, explain it right now. And if you want to learn more about navbars, I suggest to check our previous tutorials on our channel. Now we're going to add some ID. Uh, let's call it main navbar. And now finally, to fix this overlap over here, we also going to update our styles. So except for main, we also going to add header and main navbar. And let's see if this works. Yeah, that works perfectly fine. So now our navbar is also responsive. So uh, same as side nav, it's just adjusting to the different screen size. As you can see, we can also toggle over here. It still requires some adjustment and changes, but we're going to do more advanced examples in the next tutorial. For now, let's continue and let's add another component, which is going to be a Jambotron. So let's let's add some very simple Jambotron over here. We're going to get rid of um, toggler in a second. For now, let's leave it. So let's add. Jambotron with some classes, margin bottom five, text center. And let's add some H1 page title. Let's add some classes like H3 to make it smaller. And let's see how it works now. Yeah, what we also have to do is we have to add some style because our um, our navbar is currently stick to the top. So and it has 58 pixel size, so we need to add this margin as well to the top to make sure it's not overlapping with our navbar. And now we can get rid of our toggler and lorem ipsum. Let's remove this one and get rid of that one. Now it's high time to start working with our charts. So let's create a grid, so row with two columns inside that. And let's navigate to chart documentation. Let's take very first example before we start uh, explaining how does it work. And let's just paste it over here and let's see the result. So this is our chart. As you can see, it's very, very, very easy to uh, to add charts and they are interactive by default. So now let's have a closer look on how they works. There are two ways we can initialize our charts. Um, and obviously there are many different charts and uh, different chart types, like you have bars, horizontal bars, lines, pie charts, and so on and so on. And you can initialize each of the chart either using data attributes like we just did, which is uh, much easier, or with use of JavaScript. Now, what's the difference? Basically, in um, simple examples, uh, you can use data attributes because it's just easier, it's more convenient. So if you have a chart with small amount of data or the data which uh, won't be updated dynamically, then you could go with the simpler version. It's your code going to be more readable and so on. However, if you would like to adjust um, 
your data in a chart right so uh that's what we're gonna do in a future tutorial so let's assume you're gonna change a date uh or a week which this chart is visualizing so you're gonna have some some calendar over here and we're gonna change the date and the data will be reload in that case it's much more convenient to use javascript because then we can regenerate data we can connect our data source to some external sources like json files like api calls and so on and so on long story short for the easy example for the small samples you can use data attributes and that's what we're gonna do in this tutorial for more advanced go for javascript now let's have a look at the attributes uh, which are actually pretty much the same both in javascript and, and html attributes uh, so you're gonna find the corresponding ones like here you have a data labels you can also obviously find it in javascript so let's just quickly go through uh, all of them so data chart defines uh, chart type here we have a bar if you scroll down you're gonna see that the line option change our chart to line version horizontal bar and so on and so on then we have a data set label which is basically uh, a label which is displayed over here to explain user what this chart visualize and then we have a labels for our axes on the x axis and then we have a data set on the y axis so what i'm going to do now i'm going to add this uh, uh, more charts over here like we have in the final version uh it's pretty easy i'm just gonna add more rows and columns and we're gonna add the last one what we're gonna do here i'm gonna um, use um, the same size of the column uh, but i'm gonna center it using flex uh, so let me quickly do that uh, i will be using all uh, examples from our docs uh, for different charts and i will be using all this um, all the charts initialized uh, via data attributes so let's get started Uh, one thing which we also want to do uh, is we want to switch it back to container to center our content here and now we can add remaining charts Okay, I'm done with adding charts. So uh, before we end, uh, I just wanted to tell you that uh, these first seven charts can be uh, initialized using data attributes because they're quite simple and um, other charts, more advanced charts require, um, require more options. You can check all of them. Uh, you can check all of them in this API tab over here. Uh, which is going to explain to you how to adjust a lot of options which are available at your disposal over there uh, and we're going to learn we're going to show how to do and how to adjust those things and those uh, properties um, in the next tutorials but please be aware that each chart has its own options and you can do really amazing stuff with every single type of chart okay guys thank you for watching this one uh, as i said we're gonna have more there are two more admin dashboard comings uh, so i strongly encourage you to uh, subscribe to our channel to turn on notification if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like it that's gonna help us to reach a bigger audience and uh, i also strongly encourage you to join our facebook group you're gonna find the link in the description down below this video um, you're also gonna find the source code of this application over there so if something doesn't work for you just compare it with my code um, and try to spot the differences so thank you again for watching and see you in the next video